All right, Uncle Sam FM here. This is, I believe, episode 10 of the Iron Manager series. And we are at the beginning of the 2020 MLS season. This is Nashville SC's first match in MLS play. So very excited, obviously, about this. First of all, let's look a little at the some of the moves that I've made since the last video I did, which was on the 2020 MLS draft. So I did bring in some uh, a handful of players. First of all, uh, let's go to transfer history. And I do have a couple just to let you know. I've got a couple of videos coming up on squad registration. So I'll show uh, in just a moment. Uh, we'll transition to that. And then I'll also show you the waiver draft where I acquired a player. Um, I won't tell you who it is, although it'll be pretty obvious eventually at some point. And, uh, but first, let's look at some of the guys I brought in. Um, after, the last player that you saw me draft was Tim Gross from LaSalle. Right here you see my, the players that I did bring in in the draft. Um, this um, Calvillo was the last player I brought in in the expansion draft. In the super draft, I brought in Ben Haim, Peter McCarty, Pablo Azriel Rodriguez, who is now with the two squad, Jonathan Chan, who's with the two squad, uh, I think all these guys are. All the players I drafted except McCarty. McCarty I left on the squad to help with center back depth. And everyone else I, that I drafted from the Super Draft, I moved down to Nashville SC2. Uh, then brought in some guys. Now, Dussey was a player I had signed from the academy, but he didn't actually join the squad until February the 5th. Same with Michael Gonzalez. Same with Shane James believe all three of those guys are no michael gonzalez was the two squad the other two i have on the squad to fill really to fill the numbers but they'll probably play with the two squad most of this season now guys that i signed so conrad de la fuente <coughs> uh full disclosure i didn't actually scout him this is just a guy i know he's a U, he's a u.s u20 player uh he played he he's with uh barcelona I, yeah he's with barcelona um I don't remember what made me look at him, but I noticed that he was available for loan. So I approached Barcelona, said, "Hey, bring, let me bring him in," uh, and they did. So he will probably be. Well, he will be. He's gonna be. He's gonna start. He has a starting spot um, in the front three. I can play him on the left. I can play him on the right. I might even think about training him to play in the in the nine spot at striker. But for now, winger is where he's gonna play. <clears throat> and at least for this season so very excited about him he is he stepped onto the team as one of my best players we'll look at um yeah you can see three and a half stars not quite the cams level but he is he is better than anybody that i have on the bench especially in that position so conrad conrad de la fuente's player I brought in also percy Oliveras. this was a guy that my scout i've got a scout in south america scouting the west part my scout brought this guy to me. Hey, he's young. So I signed him. Might have overspent. I have a, I had a $3 million budget, transfer budget. And so I figured, hey, let's spend it right now. Get some young guys in here that I can sign, that I can train. And then, you know, hey, maybe I'll make my money back. Uh, I, I believe this player I will be able to. He's, he's four, maybe five-star potential. Uh, he's a fullback, so he'll play at the wingback spot on the right. He's, um, yeah, pretty pretty excited about what he's going to be able to bring. Uh, you know, I, I need to get him. There's some attribute he needs to get. He needs to be a better passer, right? Um, but he's got decent vision for an 18-year-old, and he makes great decisions. So a lot of these mental attributes are very good, and, and he does tackle well. Uh, he marks pretty well. So you know, to me, he was kind of it was a no-brainer to bring him in. Um, he'll also hell, by the way, his heading is pretty good. 11, uh, jumping reach, obviously not great. The strength's not great, but for a fullback, you want him to at least have some chance when they cross balls to the, to the winger on his side. So when the other team crosses the ball, that left winger, hopefully Percy will be able to defend that. Another player I brought in again, full disclosure, didn't scout him is Ben Lederman. Ben Lederman is a player who... Uh, I've kind of been following his career in real life a little bit since he uh, he actually started. I don't know if they'll show this, but he started with Barcelona's youth. Yeah, um, at like 12 or something, very young. And then because of you know this was right at that time when FIFA started kind of tightening their grip on on you know 
um, young players who clubs were signing and bringing them in as I guess, I don't know like I guess they saw it as like an indentured servitude kind of thing when really what they were doing in a way was helping these players but Lederen got sucked up in that so he had to leave Barcelona he uh, bounced around Belgium and then ended up in Poland and so I saw him and I decided to give him an offer and at first, his asking value was really low. So I put it out there, but then they said, no, we want $3.9 I got him to calm down to two and a half. Again, probably overspent. But I don't know. I like the guy in real life. So I was hoping to try and, you know, um, be a, um, help him to develop us a little bit before moving him on. I doubt he'll ever be big with us, but, you know, hey, we'll see. So um, he does have, hey, he does have all three and a half star, maybe even four and a half star potential. So I'm going to train him, see what we can, we can do with him. A couple of problems he's going to have with me is his stamina and natural fitness. Like those are both really low and I might be able to help his stamina, but I don't think I can do anything about the natural fitness. Um, if you guys know how to help that, let me know. But he's a player I signed. And then, spoiler, Walker Zimmerman I brought in the, in the... Um, the waiver draft so what i'll do right now i'm gonna i'm gonna transition to squad registration so you'll see that first these were videos that i've already made so we're gonna go to that squad registration then waiver draft i'll bring you back to show it to to do the live com against columbus to start the nashville sc mls era all right so this is um roster registration day for MLS and I've organized my team I've I've and I'll, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and let me put up my yeah if I can do that uh, this is my um, my worksheet right for the squad I've set up the 20 players who are going to occupy the uh, senior squad that slots 1 through 20 I do have a few SMS players on there. Gedeon Zalalem ended up on the SMS squad. Hassani Dotson ended up on the MLS squad. Uh, Nazarit ended up on the MLS senior squad. He's an SMS player. So that's my 20 uh, senior slots. Then I chose the 10 players who are going to be in the off-budget roster, the off-budget squad. And I... Chose uh, Josh Perez, promising winger. Obviously, brought him in in the expansion draft. Um, ben Lederman, was, who was a player I signed. Uh, Jack Maher is a GA player. And all the GA players technically occupy off-budget squad spots, even though they might have a contract that's a senior. Because they're a Generation Adidas player, they do not count against the salary cap. So he and Abu Donlati are on the GA, the off-budget squad, and then um, I, the last six spots here are, these are the reserve players, right? So these are players, you can have six players on reserve contract. And well, if you have six, two have to be homegrown players. You cannot have more than four non-homegrown reserve squad players. So uh, I did, I signed, after last season, I signed Shane James and Kojo Dose from my academy so they're homegrown players homegrown players are players that you sign from your academy so i signed those guys they are on the squad and uh, they are occupying some of the reserve slots so the other four reserve slots these are four guys who have reserve contracts these are uh, contracts that are below the senior minimum salary i think are fifty six thousand a year so uh i can have four of those that were not homegrown players um Pierre Jacome is a player that I signed from Brazil, or Argentina, sorry, last season. Um, Brian Anunga is on a reserve contract. Uh, Guillerme Barreo is a player I saw, uh, who I scouted last year from Brazil, signed him last year. He actually was on the two squad during the USL championship season last year. And then Peter McCarty is a player that I drafted. He signed a reserve contract. So all of the players um, that I signed, that are drafted, that are not on this list, I sent to the two squad. We'll look at the two squad here. It will include some players who are um, 
obviously, you know, some players that I drafted, some players that are actually on the squad, but I've listed as available. For example, Daniel Rios, uh, I have him as available for the two squad. But uh, some players that I'm kind of, I, I, and, and I have this, because I want these guys to um, spend this season developing. Now, Nashville SE2 right now, they're not in a league, so I'm scheduling a bunch of friendlies. I'll show you that right now. Um, I have friendlies up to the, this is the furthest I can, furthest out I can schedule friendlies for that team. I want them to be playing, right? To be keeping their fitness up, doing some development. But Nashville SC won't join USL League One until next year. So, but uh, their squad, uh, I've got some guys that I'm pretty excited about. Chan is a left back. Um, I'm hoping to make him. He is he's my left back of the future. I drafted him, so I'm pretty excited about him. Um, McCarty, who is on the senior squad, but I want him to be getting some, you know, some matches, getting getting playing time, even if they are friendlies. I guess that's better than nothing. Um, Rodriguez is another guy I'm pretty excited about. He one of the reasons he got bumped down is he occupies an international spot, and I only have ten of those, so I kind of have to be picky. Um, Washington is a guy who I may actually cut. I may just let him go. He's he's 26. I've listed him. Nobody's interested. He's never going to develop into anything. So he, right now, he's just kind of occupying a spot. And I do want to make sure that he doesn't take time away from Chan. Um, Alistair, John, Alistair Johnson is another player I may end up just cutting. He's young. There's some development to be done there, but I don't think he'll ever be anything that's worth anything. And I don't want him to take time away from guys that I am developing. So I may let him go. Tim Gross is another guy. My scouts right now are only saying like a four star potential, so you know, I, I don't know. I, I have this feeling about him. This twenty determination makes me want to put him on my squad and get him on the pitch and see what he does. Uh, he does have good vision. He needs to improve his passing technique or his passing uh, attribute, but it's you know with some of these mental attributes, it's really hard not to keep him right. Um, I'd like to see his work rate get better. But, you know, for a central, for a, he, he would be a number 10. You know, 14, first touch, right? His dribbling's a little low for a playmaker. But I, I just, I would really like to get him on the field. I, I feel like he's going to have a place in the future. Um, so that, you know, he's a player that I'm, I'm you know, excited about developing. This dude, Ben Haim, who I also drafted, he's another guy who I think is going to be good. He's, he has a 16 determination. My scouts um, are giving him a three and a half star. Um, that number eight position is a really tough one, right? But I feel like he's he's going to fit well into it eventually. Gary Barrow is a player who I hope to kind of develop into a ten, <clears throat> but he's um, he's got more work to do than some of these other guys. Now he is only twenty, so there is some hope, but he's a player who I may end up selling eventually. But I don't think I think I brought him in on a free. Uh, let's go to his history see if it says yeah i brought him in on a free he was a free transfer last year so you know i he's a player that i think can um e even if i end up just selling him for a hundred thousand right that's that's money that i made um Dasse is a player who i drafted no signed from the academy uh he's you know right now only the three star he may never be a all-star right but he's somebody that you know hopefully i can develop to be to be quality enough to where i can sell he's a foreign player so who knows you know maybe some african team will come over and want to sign him because he helped he helps them fit their um uh registration requirements but um yeah so that's kind of a look at some of the guys uh, gonzalez this is a goalkeeper who i signed for my academy he's what uh right now two star he could i mean look his potential could be up to four and a half star so you know if he plays well enough then who knows um penicho this is a guy i'm probably gonna cut i don't this guy is never gonna be anything and i don't he looks like he might be taking player space away from or time away from gonzalez and i need gonzalez to develop so uh so anyway that's just a look at the squad um, let's go ahead. I'm going to show you, and, and this is really kind of help, I guess, if somebody wants to, interested in playing MLS someday. So uh, go to respond. You can see I've already uh, picked the guys that I'm going to end up signing. Zalalem is injured, but he, you know he'll be out for about two months. But eventually he'll be back, so I'll, I'll put him in. That's why right now I'm only going to have 29 out of a possible 30. 
Now, some some people, and I, I'm one of those, I like to have a smaller playing squad, right? I like to have 18 to 20 players that I'm rotating between, especially in a season like this, where Nashville SC has no continental competitions. We'll be in the U.S. Open Cup, but no, you know, we won't be in the Champions League, or the. we may have some League's Cup stuff going on later. But I, I, for, I wanted, a lot of the reason I've got 30 on this team is because I am looking ahead to the to when we are going to be in the Champions League. And I want to make sure that some of these guys on the squad will be good enough to play, to help, to contribute, right? To contribute to Champions League play and then also uh, league play. To contribute to Copa Sudamericana play and then also league play. One or the other, right? So I need... Uh, I you know I'm, I need to develop a lot of these guys, so that's part of the reason. Um, there are some guys, frankly, they're not going to be in this team in the long term. Like Baji, he's you know he's pretty good right now, but eventually he's got to go. Uh, Akam is 29. That's that's right at the maximum age I like for my front players. Um, Beckles is over 30, so there's some guys who are not going to be here long term. A lot of people like to just like ditch those, and I, you know, I'm one of those, right? I don't like to keep guys over 30, 34, right? That's Beckles' age, but you know, right now he's a good player. He's going and I'm trying to get into continental play. Um, I've also had to go to a lot of players and lower their salary cap, so I'll show you real quick how to do that. Salary cap impact. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to do that with Calvillo. Um, you can right clear a couple different ways to do it. Uh, you can right click and go to contract and you just go right to buy down salary and cap impact or you can click on him and then go to contract and go to buy down salary cap impact or you could just go to contract info and it's right here the slider is right here I've already done it with a lot of guys and so I've got my um, I have got the the salary cap level to 3.95 I'm pretty sure that'll let me also so I put a register Galalam once he recovers from his injury. Galalam. Zalalam. But that's uh, so that's where I'm at. So that's my squad. I'm going to go ahead and confirm the selection. These are the 30 players I'm rolling with for this season. And uh, I'm excited. I think this is going to be a good first year for Nashville SC. All right. So this is the waiver draft, the March waiver draft. What this is, and if you've seen my videos that I made explaining MLS and the MLS rules and football manager, you might already know this, but the waiver draft is for players who had to be cut because of the MLS registration, right? So I just registered all of my players. I didn't have to cut anybody. I moved everyone to my two squad that I was not going to be able to register some teams just go ahead and waive players right and so waiving is it's it's not the same thing but it's kind of like giving players the free transfer right Re releasing players from your squad from their contract that's not the exact same thing but that's really sort of what it is in mls so all the teams all the players that teams could not fit onto the regist registered squad go into this waiver draft and this is a chance for teams who maybe have some open slots. Maybe there are some players in the waiver draft that they want to sign and reorganize their squad to help make their team better. The idea is, again, trying to help balance the league, right, to make teams um, competitively balanced. So I figured I'd just whatever, do a little show it. Um, so here we are. There are some players in it that, you know, I'm – would be interested in signing one is actually a player who uh let me go to my i think just any of these will show um one player that was in that was at least they said they were going to be in this is walker zimmerman yeah he is he is a very good defender and in real life he actually is with nashville sc uh the the update i was with i played with i'm playing this game with this save with i guess didn't have him on nashville sc i guess it's dated or whatever or maybe I'm just working off the default. I don't remember, but um, he's very tempting. I kind of want to sign him. It would mean that I would have to maybe lower his salary cap impact, uh, or I would have to, I'd have to um, drop one of my SMS players down to the two squad, which I'd be willing to do. I mean, there's, you know, I, I could, I could drop. Um, hmm. I mean, 
mean, there's some guys I guess I could like I could even I wouldn't even like Nazarite would do, dropping him down would open up a. So anyway, it's tempting, right? Um, I pick second. Let's see who Miami picks first. So they picked Joe Bendick, uh, who's you know a good player. But uh, so let's my scouts. Uh, Agadello, they rate they rate him the highest, and then he's. He has some caps. See, I wouldn't call him um, a national team regular by any stretch, but you know he's a decent player. I feel like I'm 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 strong enough at, uh, in the front. I have to actually probably have too many players up front to even think about drafting him. So then you've got Ross uh, Rossell. He is a he's a dueler national, but he has American nationality so he would be somebody i could sign he's a defensive midfielder so he could play at the six or i could drop pull him up to the eight his attributes all look pretty good uh i don't know work rate 14 and then the next is zimmerman so zimmerman uh you know he's a good defender decent passer his vision is a little low he's only 26 probably get two or three good years out of him and it would also make it um, realistic. I can't see his contract, though. That's a problem because I don't know how much he's making. So I don't know how much it would impact my squad. But, you know, I could sign him. And, and center back is, is a spot where I have, you know, I'm not super deep, right? Like I've got, okay, so I've got Nazarit. I've got Anibaba, who's really not even that good, and he's old. Like I would almost think about cutting Anibaba to sign Zimmerman. Um, Anibaba is on a $101,000 a year contract. And oh, it's a tough call. It, Zimmerman would make my back line better. So I feel like I have to draft. So I'm going to draft Zimmerman and then I'll figure it out. Okay. For no other reason, because that's how it is in real life, right? I'm, I'm bringing my save more in line with reality. So I'm going to draft Zimmerman. Boom! Drafted him, okay? So, uh, then I'll skip to my next pick. We'll see who's left. Looks like most of the teams, you know, in the last bit are skipping. Um, the only ones that's left are internationals. I can't, well, at least that my scouts rate. Uh, just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eyeball the rest, go off of what I sort of know about them from watching them play in real life. Nick Beasler, oh, he already got drafted. He's not terrible, but Will Bruin. Will Bruin is a, you know, he's a gritty little player. Um, he played for the Dynamo for a long time. You know, he's, I can remember when the Dynamo drafted him, but it's just too old. It wouldn't bring anything. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking. There's no, is, Rodney Wallace is good, but he's, he's old, you know, he's old. So I can't, I'm not going to bring in anybody who's just over, who's over 30. That would be crazy. Kai Kamara is a legend in MLS. Sasha Kleshton. But I'm not gonna, you know, there's, I'm just looking, there's nobody on this list. Now, obviously, you can be a little more, you know, Bonnet Garcia is a guy that I personally, he's one of my favorite players. He played for Dynamo for years. Very good player, but again, 35 years old. It's, you can't let, you can't let your personal feelings. Benny Falhaber is a guy who's pretty good. You know, and maybe in a different situation, some of these guys would help. Right, maybe they have, maybe maybe for no other reason for their mental attributes they help mentor, but I don't. Um, for the team that I have, none of these guys fit that bill, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pass. Right, which is you know you had that option, and stop picking players from the draft. We'll complete the draft, and I think there's only two rounds anyway. Yeah, so that was a good, uh, I think a pretty good pick for me. Um, and now, oh, they wanted, <laughs> I didn't even see this. You can trade your waiver draft picks. Kansas City wanted it. Oh, and I should have, oh, they wanted the second pick of the first round. See, I feel like I got, they were offering an international spot, but to me, Walker Zimmerman is going to be better than that international spot. So, so that's the MLS waiver draft for Nashville SC for this season. All right, so there you have it, and this is the 18 that I'm going to trot out on the field today against Columbus. Um, I feel like it's a pretty strong squad. It's not there yet, right? I've got, um, like, Beckles, hey, he's getting older, but he's still, you know, he's, he's not as fast as you would, I guess, like. 
But you know what? He's got a 16 in natural fitness. I feel like his stamina will hold up. He does tackle well. I'd like him to pass better. But, you know, for today, he's going to do well. Uh, Hassani Dotson is young on the other side on the left. He, I mean, obviously, I'd like him to be a little more experienced. I'd like him to have better vision. You know, I'd like him to be a better, like, there's a lot of, he needs to develop, right? He's just not as developed as I would like. But, um, you know, he's he's a good option for today. Uh, and, you know, these guys are, this is going to be a decent team, right, that I'm going to put on the field. I don't expect this team to, like, dominate like we did in the USL Championship, right? Now, this team would dominate USL Championship, but that's that's over, right? So now it's time to move up, right? We're, we're upping our – the competition is getting harder, stronger. And so um, I do feel like up front we're pretty good. You know, Dunlady, I – He's not the ideal number nine. Um, in fact, you know what? I think I am going to drop him for a cam. He's a little better finisher, yeah. But so either way, though, still even at number – at the, the 11 spot. Um, I, you know, he could be better. But Mukhtar is, you know, he is going to – he is – he's the guy. He's going to – he's going to create. Uh, he's going to – he's going to get the ball where those guys up front can finish. He's going to finish himself a little bit. Um, McCarty, he's 32, but still works hard. You know, he's, he's going to be the guy who brings it from the back to the front, you know, from Godoy, the six, get it up. And so, you know, we're a team who can, um, again, I don't expect to dominate, but we're, we're going to, we're going to, I feel like we're a playoff team. Uh, Columbus, uh, looking real quick at, at, uh, their squad, they are, you know, they, by scouts aren't crazy about their ability, but hey, in the back, they're going to be tough, right? Um, and, you know, there's like these guys down here, they're not on for whatever reason. It doesn't have them up in the start, but they're going to start, right? You'd be crazy not to start Zardes. This is a guy who, he's a national team player, uh, very fast, right? Uh, I'm, he's got to be on the high end of that 12 to 16. Um, you got some guy like uh, Z uh, Zorion. <laughs> I know it's a terrible pronunciation, but you know. So they'll start. So they're going to be a good team. I, I expect a tough game today um, against Columbus. We are interestingly this is we are ice the first Sunday of the season, right? And and Emily, I don't know if the game did this on purpose, but both of the expansion teams got the Sunday games. Um, they've already started league play on saturday uh, february 29th see all these results here and then today inter miami played at three o'clock today we're playing at seven o'clock that's the prime time matchup so everybody obviously wants to see what this nashville sc team can do so without further ado let's dive in and i've also changed things a little bit i have i'm sure i'm like everybody else right everybody turns sound off right away Right when they first download MLS or download Football Manager, sound off. But I'm gonna play with sound today. I did. I have tested it a little bit and try to make sure that it does not. It's not too loud and dominates my commentary. So here we go. Columbus, the Columbus Crew is our first MLS match. Now the, in real life, Nashville SC played their first MLS game against Atlanta, which was a rival. Atlanta won, but Nashville was pretty, uh, I think it was 2-1 to one was the final. They were in the match. They played them pretty well. Uh, I, I guess like, ooh, Duino, Cam, and, oh, De La Fuente, so, who picks off that pass. Finish that, son. Finish that. Mukhtar with a free kick. Oh, and Room. Goalkeeper's name is Room. Comes out and gets it. And now Godoy to Beckles to Nazari. Let's see if we get something out of this highlight yet. Cam now has it. Puts it to De La Fuente who skins his defender, but shot is deflected wide. De La Fuente, I was pretty excited to get that loan. In real life, he is going to be a very good player. Ooh, Godoy shot goes wide. He is going to um, probably won't hear about him with the national team for another three, four years. Probably not this cycle. Uh, he'll be with the U-20s this cycle. And then, you know what? Maybe at the end of the cycle, De La Fuente will make his way into the team. Like, I feel like right now he's probably better than Donovan was at the same age. Godoy up to Beckles, who takes it into the area, puts it to De La Fuente, whose shot goes off the bar over and out. 
So we're a half hour into our first MLS match, and it's still nil-nil. Nagby has it. And here comes Columbus. To Nagby. Back out wide to the left. Oh, Akam takes that pass from the defender and finishes it. It's 1-0. That is the first Nashville SC goal. That It is now 1-0 Nashville over Columbus. He took that pass away. Columbus could not catch him. He, he That's a pretty tough angle to squeeze. He squeezed that in between the last defender and the goalkeeper. Still got it on target, and we're up 1-0. That's a big goal. So it's 1-0. Hey, let's get a second right away, right? I'm going to go and tell him to keep telling him to be creative. And Akam, once more, he comes to pressure the keeper, and he gives it away to Beckles, who takes it down the right. And Beckles... Sends it to McCarty, to Godoy, whose shot goes wide. It looks like we're going to go into the half. Ooh, uh-oh, though. Columbus with a highlight right in the stoppage time, and they equalize. That, right, look at that. That was after the stoppage. It was supposed to be over, but, you know, that was... Can't fault the ref there. I fault our defense. All right, who is... I think that's Beckles. Yeah, good finish. That's a really, that's a disappointing way to end the half. Look at the stats. I gotta, I gotta get better at it. Like, they finish way too high a percentage of their chances. I, I won't show this, but in the preseason, in the preseason, we played in the um, Sun Coast Classic Cup against Sierra, a team from Brazil, in the final. I outshot them 34 to 3. They finished two of those shots. And so we go into extra time tied at two, and then I lose three to one on penalties. So I've got to, you know, I don't, and my defense just, and like that wasn't even a counter goal, right? That was like they should have, that's just poor. It feels like it was poor defending. All right, so it's 1 1. We're going to regroup, right? We're going to regroup and get this win. Uh oh, Columbus here on a highlight. Come on, guys. We gotta. We gotta pick this. Uh, oh, ball over the top to Zardes, who thankfully Cropper makes the save there. All right, corner kick. Mukhtar puts it into the area. Zimmerman. It's his first match as a Nashville SC player. Heads it over. De La Fuente wins that goal kick, and here comes a buildup. Godoy. Nazarit. You had Beckles with a nice run on the right, but you let it, and now you had, there we go. There's Dotson on the left. To Mukhtar, to a cam. Nice through ball there. I thought for sure that was offside. Apparently not, but we get a corner. Mukhtar puts it in, and nobody, everybody just stood there and watched it. Oh, don't lose it in the... <sighs> All right, headed away. Heads away the corner. Oh, Zardes. Okay, he was offside. <laughs> Looks like this is going to be a draw. McTar's free kick goes wide for a goal kick for Columbus. So, looks like we have seven seconds to finish it. De La Fuente puts a ball up to Leal. Leal's cross in, and it's cleared away, and that's it. All right, so one-to-one. -one. First match ever. Um... Look at the stats. I, we kind of lost the plot a little bit there after we scored. Uh, Columbus, of course, got the equalizer, even though we, we had dominated the first half. Overall, we outplayed them. You know, 69% possession. Uh, mid to high 60s is what we shoot for, right? Uh, and then we outshot them 17 to 6. Nine, uh, well, 6 to 5 on target. Right, so maybe so maybe it was a little more even than it looked. And Columbus did have two clear cut chances. Zardes was you know, when he came on, he made a difference. And then of course their goal had to be a clear cut chance. We had four half chances, five clear and half. Um, I know FM's not perfect with calculating that, but ninety percent pass completion. 89 the defense in the midfield, the midfield at 89. Probably she needs to be a little better. Um, average rating, we were higher, so I think the average rating is one of the better um, gauges of who, you know, which team played better. So one to one, you know, a road draw, we'll take it. You know, we'll take it. Um, tell the guys they did good. Happy with that performance. 
happy with the performance. Maybe we could have been a little happier with the result. So, uh, exciting way to end the first first MLS match for Nashville SC. Um, didn't get three, but you know what? It's a long season. Uh, if you can draw on the road and win at home, right? You can. We know we can at least make the playoffs with that. So, um, make sure you in the next episode. Let's see. We'll look at the um, what we got coming up. Maybe maybe the Open Cup match. Um, maybe I'll, I'll tentatively pencil in live coming that, um, yeah, we'll, we'll shoot for that. Maybe, maybe one of these Minnesota United matches, but, uh, this is Uncle Sam FM. I'm signing off. I'll see you next time for the Iron Manager series.